Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. This motherboard is the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master. This is actually in the motherboard that I used when I did the launch review of the Intel Core i9 9900K, the uh, 8 core 16 thread processor that launched a few weeks back. Uh, so all the performance figures that came with that processor review actually came from this board. So in a sense, I've already reviewed it, but what I didn't do at the time was take a close look at the features and the uh, nuances of this particular motherboard. I was looking at sort of Z390 in more general terms. So now it's time to actually do a proper motherboard review. The layout is quite conventional for an enthusiast motherboard in that you've got multiple everything. We've got three PCI Express slots for graphics cards, except that's not entirely accurate because that's a times 16, but if you populate both, you've got times eight times eight. That one there is actually a times four. And if you install a PCI Express SSD in one of these slots, it'll suddenly become a times two. So on the face of it, you can install triple RTX 2080s, but you can't, but then you wouldn't want to, would you? Three M.2s under these covers here, they got uh, thermal pads, so they are not only sort of a cosmetic and a protection, they also help to shed heat from your M.2. Uh, then we have four uh, DDR4 slots. Around here, hiding away, I have to rotate the boards, so you can actually see it because it's in this sort of uh, cutout in this bit of plastic. We've got dual uh, eight pin EPS connectors for the CPU. Uh, common sense says that's going to be overkill. You don't need a 24 pin and two eights to power a Core i9. But what the heck, uh, whether you actually need to plug in both, that's a different question. Probably one would do you very nicely. And then we have a pair of fan headers for CPU, CPU optional. We've got RGB headers there. So we've got a conventional and also digital. So good work uh, by Gigabyte there. Uh, OC button is going to be for presets, uh, although we prefer to work in the BIOS. 24 pin connector for your main power. Another fan header there. Uh, we've got USB 3, uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2. I just had to refer to the manual to establish that that is a header for a Thunderbolt card. Uh, wasn't aware of that. You live and you learn. We've got a shorting jumper there, so if you want to clear the CMOS, six laid down SATA. Here we have front panel headers. There we have three fan connectors all closed together, so logically they'd be for connecting fans from the front of the board, I'd have thought, unless you want to have some fans in the floor. Personally, I don't much go for that. Here we have a reset button all on its own, albeit next to the debug display. And that is a curious thing to see there. But if you turn to the IO panel, we actually have the power button on the IO. And I still think I don't like that. We've seen that now on one or two gigabytes and it strikes me as a, a, an odd thing to see. The idea you could reach around the back of your board to plug in a flash drive or some such and either hit the clear CMOS or hit the power button. Uh, so reset, we've got a pair of USB 2s. Uh, that is a TPM header, again, uh, two uh, RGB headers, uh, so uh, parallel or mirroring, which would it be the ones at the top, very nice. Uh, flick switches to control the dual BIOS, uh, and then we have audio. Uh, here we have uh, caps for the audio, which is the chips under there. And then turning to the IO panel, power button and clear CMOS button, personally not a fan. Uh, we have Wi-Fi connection points for the antennae. We've got four USB 2s, HDMI out, uh, two USB 3s, uh, Gen 1. Uh, I think of those as USB 3.0s. Three USB 3.1 Gen 2s and one type, uh, type A's and one type C. Intel gigabit and a bunch of audio. To strip the motherboard down, you remove a couple of screws from the top side, then you flip it over, remove some screws on the underside, and you pull off the extensive heat shield, which has a thermal pad that contacts those doublers there, and that thermal pad has remained in place on those doublers there. You see? And we take it out of the way, and then we can pull off the remainder of the hardware. You can take off the M.2 covers easily enough. There's this plastic doohickey here over the audio, which is obviously just cosmetic. And then you get to the meat and potatoes. So we take off this uh, 
shroud here over the VRMs. You can see there the connector for the uh, lights. And you can also see that shroud really does cover this uh, heatsink in particular. Uh, in conjunction with the fixed I.O. shield, there's not a lot of ability for air to flow in this section. Uh, we have seen some motherboards with tiny little fans in here, but nonetheless, some ventilation in the I.O. shield perhaps, or, or <laughs> here's a thought. Lose this plastic, perforate the plastic, do something. It is, after all, entirely cosmetic and we'd much prefer having some airflow. However, the heat sinks themselves are good bits of kit. So we've got two proper finned heat sinks linked together with a heat pipe. You can see it's machined such the copper is exposed. This is good work. Gigabyte, I think at the moment, does the best job with VRM heat sinks on the market. If there's anybody doing a better job, it doesn't leap to mind. This is far removed from the lumps of aluminium. Uh, these pieces here are slotted and these pieces are properly finned. That's good work. And then we have the board itself laid bare and looking uh, really rather solid. So the fundamental point is the VRMs are a uh, 12 plus 2 scheme. The VRM controller can handle 8 channels and we've got uh, 6 double to give 12 plus 2. Uh, there is a graphics output on the I.O., uh, not that the, uh, not most people are going to use that with the Core i9, for example. But the point being is you can, if push comes to shove, connect uh, graphics to the I.O. Uh, so you, therefore you have to have some hardware uh, associated with that side of things. Nonetheless, once you strip the board down, you can see it looks a solid piece of work uh, and everything is exactly where you'd expect it to be. Uh, it's looking promising. The fact that Gigabyte is working on the VRMs so hard these days and the cooling for the VRMs, pretty much the only complaint you can raise at this stage is be nice to have a little bit more airflow. Our test setup consists of the Gigabyte motherboard, obviously, Core i9 9900K, 16 gigabytes G Skill Sniper X, that's a DDR4 3400 megahertz, a uh, Founders Edition RTX 2080 graphics card. SSD is a WD 1TB M.2 black. CPU cooler is a Fractal Design Celsius S24, that's a, uh, f uh, an Ace Tech 240mm. And then the power supply, Seasonic Prime Platinum 1300 watts. So the BIOS, uh, this is BIOS Revision 5K. Uh, the latest BIOS is version 6, but this one I tested on, so let's stick with this. Uh, you've got the option of going for classic mode, which is this, or jumping into easy mode, which is the uh, so slightly more uh, friendly interface. Um, and you will note that the CPU frequency 4795, and it's like, well, what's that all about then? Also, memory frequency 3468, but didn't he just say it's at 3400? You'll notice that it's XMP enabled. Uh, and the explanation is quite straightforward. We go into classic mode and we see that here we go auto uh, base clock 10203 in other words it basically sneaked about 100 megahertz odd onto the uh, clock speed so that's the explanation that's why the test figures are 4.74 gigahertz rather than 4.7 gigahertz because out of the box that's the speed at which it runs you might not like that you might like that uh, I understand actually both points of view uh, and if you want to choose to change the base clock to 100 then, for example, it, uh, <laughs> there you go, you see. And if we go down, 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 there we go, auto 10203. And you can go to CPU upgrade and you can pick a profile. Uh, you'll note that uh, these uh, relate to Coffee Lake rather than uh, to 9th gen. Uh, whether the latest bias yet has profiles for 9th gen, don't know, but that's irrelevant to us. All the other bits and pieces are standard, so you can bump up the multiplier to you know, 50 times or whatever it might be. Um, let's get back to auto before I do something terrible later on. There we go. And XMP obviously enabled. All the other bits and pieces are exactly as you'd expect. It's the MIT where the overclocking is. Within MIT, advanced power settings, and there we have the options for all the good stuff, such as load line calibration. You get uh, uh, guidance as to which... Uh... There you see, it changes as you go. Uh, Extreme was the uh, profile that I used in the testing, worked very nicely. And then back to normal. 
We do like the visual, and again, similar uh, options and throughout. So quite a straightforward bias, but you get all the options that you want. And the joy of it is that you can ignore pretty much anything that you don't want. So you can bump up V-Core, uh, change load line calibration, bump up the multiplier, and you're good to go. and into Windows 10. Z390 Aorus Master is an impressive motherboard. It supports the new i9 9900K uh, uh, impeccably, uh, just really well. The weakest part of the package, curious enough, is this new processor, which is what I said in my launch review, uh, in that thermals, it's thermally limited, uh, but then eight core, 16 threads in that little desktop processor, not such a surprise at those enormous clock speeds. So when you run the uh, processor out of the box, you can expect to see temperatures around the 75 or 80 degrees when you're absolutely hammering it at stock clocks, allowing it just to do its thing. Overclock it, it's a different story. Five gigahertz, maybe even 5.1 gigahertz, temperatures are gonna hit like 90 degrees for the CPU. And for most people, that's just too high. Push it further, you can see 100. But the fact is the motherboard itself is not working at all hard. Those VRMs are running around the mid 40s and that's under extreme load, which is deeply impressive. If you're paying a colossal premium for VRMs that are gonna run at 40 something degrees rather than 60 something degrees, you might say to yourself, well, there we go, I'm not gonna do that. But you don't. This uh, motherboard is comparable with other motherboards priced around the 300 pound mark in terms of features and what you get for your money. You're not paying extra for the VRMs, it's what Gigabyte includes in the package. This is part of Gigabyte essentially restoring their reputation after some rather shaky work uh, some years ago now. Uh, this motherboard absolutely is part of that. It's uh, very close to the top of their product stack in terms of specification hardware, and it does a very good job as a result. Probably the only thing I don't like about it, really don't like, uh, as opposed to have my doubts about, are those uh, control buttons on the I.O. panel. Other than that, it's all good. You can make the case, as so often, how many M.2s do you need? Do you really need three of them? Probably not. Do you want the one that's sort of right under the graphics card? Possibly not. But that is true of a great many motherboards on all platforms. So you have to take that out of the equation. Similarly, PCI Express slots, that bottom one, it might as well not be there, and I'd be just as happy if it wasn't there. Way to overhang the bottom of those uh, headers and uh, switches and so on. The board would not be half as functional. But uh, other bits and pieces I like a great deal, dual RGB connectors at the bottom, dual R RGB connectors at the top. That sort of thing works very well. The little detaily, detaily stuff such as laid down SATA. Yeah, I mean, all boards should have that as far as I'm concerned. In terms of the layout, other than the I.O. panel in a detail way, it's very good. Uh, airflow around the VRMs is not that great, but it still works well because the hardware is so rock solid. Uh, were they to sort out the IO panel uh, plastic shield and either perforate it or cut it back hugely, which is my personal uh, preference, uh, this board would be marginally better. But as it is, they've used it for Aorus branding and fair enough, you can't really argue about that too much. Overall, this is a very good motherboard and it says to me that if you want to support the latest desktop processors from Intel, the Coffee Lake refreshes, uh, £300 is as much as you need to spend unless you're getting something quite exceptional for your money, some feature that is just above and beyond. This board sets a benchmark, which is why we used it for the launch review of i9 9900K. Very, very good. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, make sure you subscribe. That way we'll let you know about new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This motherboard is the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master.